Hi, I'm Tom Walkinshaw and I'm the founder of Public Tube Shop. Uh, we aim to democratise access to space uh, by using very low cost stuff like Public Tubes. There's a few people on our team, but it's mainly myself and Connor Ford. Uh, Connor used to work at Spire and put them in a, a number of tubes apps and I've worked on a number of Public Tubes. So traditionally, you know, satellites been expensive, slow innovation cycles, uh, risk all your little costs, and bespoke in more volume. So we're trying to get up to higher volume and less bespoke for our sort of goal. And this is sort of a, a visual representation from the geosats down to um, the pocket cubes. So we're a lot smaller than even a tube sat. Um, you've got one in your, your hand um, and in your pocket even. We think this is nearly an order of magnitude drop in cost uh, for, say, you know, one new, include the hardware and launch, compared to a pocket tube, which is hardware and launch. It's, um, it's a very low cost solution, and if you launch to orbit, it costs more, costs more per gram than gold. So you want to make it as light as possible, and that means going smaller than a kilo satellite user. Standard 5 centimeter form factor deploys from our pods, uses tabs over rails, um, and has potential for a large envelope, which means deployables um, much greater than kind of a few sats. There's a German satellite called REN, which was launched. So we get four uh, satellites with the first one to launch. This is a 1T, it's a smaller satellite. It's a 50 dollar satellite, which is still operational. It's been going for about 15 months in orbit. Um, and this was. Um, yeah, biggest success story so far. Sea Mobile Tube was a, a Californian built satellite, and Tube Scout was a, a, a um, one from Maryland in the USA. So they were all deployed. So this is um, Chantal was on earlier. She uh, was involved in Unisat 7, uh, Unisat 5 um, And this was the first cluster one with Pop Cube. So it's people who were involved, but it's really good backgrounds. And they launched with the Denefer uh, vehicle. And that's the launch. Um, so I think Shanghai also has launches available for the next uh, cluster. So we've taken this phone pop cubes in general to date. Um, cameras, uh, X-ray detectors, access to reactor reaction wheels, um, propulsion even, post cosmic thrusters of phone, um, based on sensors, um, quite a lot of innovative tech. Um, and we're working with a lot of different teams in the next generation of the pocket cube, so the next batch, um, as some of them are flying electric smoke detectors, uh, LED beams, uh, chipset deployments, uh, and a lot more optical payloads. This is one of the new batch, it's a Hungarian pocket cube called Smog One, which is um, a team that have finally done a one year called MassAt One, which made orbit on Vega and um, is expected to launch very soon. Um, Oscube Stuart, I think, is speaking today as well. So um, it's on the Russian Australian Pocket Cube. Uh, it's some great work over there in Kerr. So we sell Pocket Cube kits. We're a commercial company and we make revenue by selling hardware to teams. And um, we have uh, a start of satellite kit, which includes uh, a dev board, an OVC, a radio, um, things like that. Um, so basically our own computer is the world's smallest commercially available satellite computer. Uh, we have had a first order and we're doing a first production run just now. Um, uses an MSP430, uh, uses the PQ60 standards, which is a common interface between boards, and learned a pretty solid uh, OBZ. For the radio, we work with partners in the US to uh, sell many satcom. Which is the world's most satellite radio. It's a UHF VHF. Has two options. It has the amateur band, which is the 420 to 450 megahertz band, and experimental, which is 902 to 928. Uh, really small, really lightweight, and you know, 10 grams. It's pretty tiny. We have a whole selection of different parts, as you probably guess. Uh, we have pretty much a full satellite. We're not far off. Um, we have. Between our end development and our end production stuff, we have a full satellite, but we're still working on R&D. We sell structures, um, 1P, 1P, 2P, 3P. Um, we sell jigs. We sell um, solar panels as well. So 
uh, alongside um, apart in development, we have an EPS in development, electrical power system. It's quite an old render, but um, we've been able to really cram a lot of capability into this. Um, sort of similar to the one users that are out there, EPS, we've been able to replicate all of that capability from one of the world's most advanced EPSs in the people satellite class. Um, so to do the deployment, we've been working on a few concepts around massive deployers. And this is something we're hoping to get funding to use on. It didn't quite work out both times. So we're going to have another bash, hopefully. Um, this is 96 uh, PO copy cubes. So this could be quite transformational if this is built. Um, and we think this is the only way you can do large scale deployment because uh, to get the cost low, you need a lot of people doing it. So you need an infrastructure that can cope with that. Our customer base is pretty diverse. Um, we have various customers at NSPO, which is a Taiwanese space uh, agency organization. Um, so we have customers in Asia and North America. Ironically, none in Europe. And the next launch, so Shanghai was probably speaking about this, but there's a Unisat 7 uh, coming along and it's flying about 12p, I think, on the cube. So People are looking to do poly tubes, then speak to Chantal, I'm sure she can sort you out for launch. Um, pretty decent prices as well. So, yeah, rattle to that kind of quickly. Um, sorry for having to record this, but it's currently like 5 a.m. in the morning in Scotland. So, um, yeah, uh, feel free to email me questions 